skilled in adorning or arranging. That is the meaning of the Greek word kosmetikos, from which derives the word cosmetics. Besides makeup, the word kosmetikos encompasses the act of protecting and cleaning, as well as the well-being, of the different parts of the human body, the skin, the hair, the nails and the eyes. But for ancient Egyptians, beauty and makeup were more than simple aspects of everyday life. They also had a sacred, medical and magical dimension. Makeup is present in statues and in painting, and those who could afford it wish to be accompanied by cosmetics in the afterlife. So on this video, we are going to explore the world of beauty, makeup and hygiene in ancient Egypt and understand why ancient Egyptians saw them as essential in life and death. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. In ancient Egypt, beauty is a spiritual ideal related to happiness, fertility, good fortune and youth, as well as order and perfection. The ideals of physical beauty were established very early on in the Egyptian civilization, with little change throughout its long history. Egyptian art represented those ideals. Generally speaking, the painters and sculptors of ancient Egypt represented their counterparts as eternally youthful and beautiful. Men and women are shown on the peak of their physical development, young and fit. Men are athletic, with broad shoulders and robust members. Women are slim, with small waists and firm breasts. Old age and overweight are rarely portrayed. To achieve these beauty ideals, men and women, besides controlling their diet and having an active life, could use cosmetics and ointments on their faces and bodies. Everybody in ancient Egypt used makeup and oils, regardless of their gender, age and social status. The only difference was the quality and the price of these products and their containers. But cosmetics were used for more practical reasons besides only beauty. Egypt is a warm and dry area. The valley of the Nile, the cradle of the Egyptian civilization and the area where the overwhelming majority of its population lived is surrounded by harid deserts on both sides. Dry winds, dust and insects were a constant presence in ancient Egyptian life. Cosmetics and ointments were a useful solution to the problems that these conditions created on the human body. Black eye makeup, usually referred to as kol, was used to protect the eyes against insects and the brightness of the sun. These mineral powders were normally grinded and kept in coal jars and applied with a stick, like this one, discovered in the tomb of Hatnefer, dated from the 18th dynasty and today exposed in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Almond-shaped eyes, so recognizable in ancient Egyptian art and one of the main features of Egyptian beauty, were achieved by applying coal to the eyelids, lashes and eyebrows. This type of eyeliner was made with black galena powder, an inexpensive product used by all Egyptians, regardless of their wealth, gender and social status. Another popular type of coal, at least during the ancient kingdom, was green coal, a type of eyeshadow made with malachite. Red pigments, like red ochre, were used on the cheeks and on the lips. Ointments and oils were used to moisturize the skin, making it soft, firm and free from wrinkles and spots. These goods were seen as so important to ancient Egyptians that during the first strike recorded in history, during the reign of Pharaoh Ramses III, the builders of the royal tombs in the Valley of the Kings demanded the immediate payment of their delayed salaries consisting of food and ointments, the essentials for daily life. Recipes and beauty treatments are listed in ancient sources like the Edwin Smith Papyrus who prescribes red natron, honey and northern salt grounded into a compound to be massaged on the skin for renewing it. For the face, alabaster powder, natron powder, northern salt and honey mixed into an exfoliant. To prevent mosquito stings, the Elbers papyrus prescribes fresh balanos oil. Like skin, hair was of the utmost importance for ancient Egyptians, both men and women. Wigs were extremely appreciated and made from plant fibers, human hair and, more rarely, animal hair. With time, their construction became increasingly more complex and intricate and their shape and length accompanied the changes in taste. Like wigs, hair in general, besides being an element of body adornment, was seen as a symbol of sensuality and eroticism, and referred to in many ancient papyri discussing sexuality. On the other side, body hair seemed to have been something the Egyptians didn't favor, preferring to remove it instead with the help of blades and tweezers. A relief in the sarcophagus of Princess Kaiwit offers us an open window into an intimate moment in the life of an Egyptian, her toilette. Kaiwit sits on an armchair while sipping from a bowl of milk, we are in the presence of the final moments of her toilette. 
Behind the princess, a servant gives the final touches on her hairstyle, possibly a wig, while her mistress waits to see the final results through her mirror. Made from polished metal, her mirror is equal to the ones discovered by archaeologists. Any makeup box wouldn't be complete without a mirror, more or less luxurious, a reflection of the owner's social and economical status. Jewels, hair and makeup ready, Kaiwit only needs one final touch on her look before she goes about her day. Her perfume. In antiquity, Egyptian perfumes were highly coveted and considered the best in quality. Unlike our modern-day perfumes, ancient Egyptian perfumes used no alcohol solution to lodge the scent. Instead, a wide range of macerated aromatic plants were mixed with oils and kept in perfume jars, like this one, in the shape of a monkey, dated from the New Kingdom. Scent was an important dimension to ancient Egyptian life and well-being, but it also had a religious meaning. Egyptians believed that the gods announced their presence with a sweet, irresistible smell. Like ointments and makeup, perfume was an essential part of the daily rituals in the temples throughout Egypt. For this reason, Pharaoh Atshepsut sent an expedition to the mysterious land of Punt in order to obtain myrrh and frankincense, used for religious cults and for the production of perfume and cosmetics. If perfume and makeup were fundamental for the Egyptian civilization, so was hygiene. Washing seemed to be a regular part of Egyptian society and, after a long hot day, a refreshing and welcome pleasure. In the homes of the rich, archaeologists have found rooms dedicated to washing and complex water systems. Houses were regularly cleaned and fumigated to get rid of dirt, rodents and insects. French Egyptologist Christian Jacques gives us a good example that illustrates how important hygiene was in ancient Egypt. In the end of the tale of Sinue, Sinue, the protagonist of the story, returns to Egypt after a long absence. When he was received in the court of the pharaoh, the queen didn't recognize him. He had become an authentic Bedouin. The only way to make him an Egyptian again was through hygiene. Sinue was washed, shaved and given clean linen clothes, as well as makeup and perfume. When Sinue reappeared in front of the queen, thanks to hygiene, she was now able to recognize him again as an Egyptian. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.